Um, the second speaker today is Ronald James Bacalow, and hopefully I pronounced that correctly, from Orange Marmalade Studios in Manila. It's quite exciting. We've got such a varied um, international audience here today. So Ronald is an award-winning filmmaker, a comic book creator, and a mental health advocate. Um, and he strives to spread mental health awareness through visual storytelling mediums such as short films, documentaries, comics and graphic novels and online video content. And recently he's been advocating for um, smartphone filmmaking as a means of empowering storytellers. He's also got a bit of a um, mean YouTube following, so I was checking him out on YouTube, so you can have a look at that too. So Ronald's presentation will be on Reframe Your Mind, Telling Visual Stories of Mental Health Awareness Through Mobile Smartphone Filmmaking. Very good, Ronald. Hi, so let's, let's talk about filmmaking and, and mental health. So filmmaking, it's, it's literally looking at something through a lens. In a, in a figurative sense, it is looking at a moment or event through a certain perspective. As a filmmaker, you are sharing your distinct point of view by using cinematic language like camera angles and editing techniques to direct what you want your audience to see and to feel. Just as filmmaking is a matter of interpretation and perspective, so too is our own mental health. Something happens in our life, oftentimes beyond our control. And depending on what our belief system is and the conditioning we have received from our past experiences, we will always interpret an event or situation in a different way. Ancient Greek philosopher Epictetus, founder of Stoicism said, people are not disturbed by things, but by the views they take of them. So it's really, how we react to things, how we react to situations that really disturb us and cause us problems. So let's talk about how we can reframe our mental health, especially through uh, this ABC model that was developed by the American psychologist and psychotherapist, Albert Ellis, who developed this model for the development of emotions and behaviors and has become the basis of numerous cognitive therapies today, such as CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy. So it begins with letter A for activating event. So this is the situation or circumstance that may trigger an emotional response. This could be something like perhaps a job interview or uh, an exam at school, or maybe even like a breakup with a partner. And then you have the letter B, the your belief, personal belief or belief systems. And this is, this is your your, I guess your personal lens of how you would interpret or evaluate that situation or that activating event. And depending on uh, your own personal attitudes in life or even uh, your past experiences that may have conditioned to where you are now, you will uh, evaluate every event differently, either positively or negatively. And so from there follows letter C, consequence. And this is where we derive our thoughts, our emotions, and behavior, once again, depending how we interpreted that initial event. And so, for example, if you had, for, for example, maybe your girlfriend broke up with you, and, and if your own personal belief is that, you know, you are completely despicable and you don't deserve to be loved, your thoughts will reflect that. Your emotions will reflect that reflect that. You'll feel depressed, you'll feel down, and even your behavior will reflect that. And you might even feel, you know, you'll stop, stop eating, you'll starve yourself, and who knows, you might even go to further lengths, perhaps even self-harming yourself. And so according to this model uh, from Albert Ellis, it's not actually the event or the situation that is the direct cause of these thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. Rather, it's our interpretation of them, our, our belief of them, the way we look at it. And so Alice further expounded on this ABC model by adding letter D, which is disputation. This is where we, we dismantle our original belief or reaction. We, we dissect it and we, we debunk it because most of the times we humans are pretty emotional creatures. And sometimes we come off having irrational thoughts, especially in the, with our initial reactions. And so 
when we dispute that initial uh, belief or reaction, we can look at it at different angles, reframe it in a different way, particularly in a positive light. And then from there, once we've looked at it and reframed it in a different way, it is possible to produce uh, letter E, uh, a, a positive effect, alternative thoughts, emotions, and behaviors that are more constructive and more healthier, more mentally healthier. And this, this is where I believe the art of filmmaking can make a difference by presenting a unique and positive perspective that can challenge irrational beliefs regarding mental health issues like depression and suicide, as well as empower the mental health movement itself, which aims to spread awareness and knowledge. By using the power of visual storytelling, we have an effective means of ins to instill empathy and ultimately break the stigma associated with mental illness, which is usually a product of ignorance or misunderstanding. So we're just gonna look at a few uh, case studies briefly. Um, a few short films that I had made and produced, the last three actually that I made. And we're gonna look uh, particularly at it at their uh, production, how they were made, particularly with a, a smartphone, and also its social impact, its effect, um, especially in regards to mental health issues. Uh, the first film, Breaking Through the Darkness, was a short documentary on uh, my old childhood friend, Lamarock, who's a, a hip hop dance instructor. And uh, I, we documented his unique story about, about how he dealt with his own depression and suicidal tendencies through breakdancing. He found that like his saving grace was through his passion for dancing and teaching dancing. He found that whenever he would stop doing breakdancing, he would fall back into the rumination and negative thoughts and the suicidal um, ideation. And so this was shot actually on vacation while I was on vacation in Melbourne, Australia. And so I, I didn't pack any gear with me, it wasn't planned. Uh, so I only had my mirrorless camera, a smartphone, and I happened to have a portable gimbal. So it was a very light and compact and very spontaneous uh, production. Uh, and so far, uh, this has received uh, more than 30,000 views on social media. And it was even endorsed and featured by the vice president of the Philippines uh, who invited me on a national radio show to talk more about mental health awareness particularly at that time where the mental health bill or law was recently like, um, enacted into law in the Philippines, which recognizes uh, the rights and dignities of those with mental illnesses. The second film is uh, a short, mostly silent narrative film told in a reverse narrative. It's called Kamustakana, or in English, How Are You? And it it, the story literally plays in reverse. It's rewind the whole film from the moment a university student takes his own life. And then we go back and see what led to that uh, fatal moment. And it was actually inspired by a true story of a successful TV journalist here in the Philippines who, who actually released a video online, a video message after he took his own life uh, in a fancy hotel bathtub. And he said in that video message, uh, like a simple, like how he lamented how one simple, how are you? If someone asked him, how are you? It could have prevented his suicide. And so that's how this film, the concept of this film uh, was born. And so this too, uh, due to uh, limitations to budget and also uh, time restrictions, we also shot this with a mirrorless camera, also a smartphone and a portable gimbal. And although this film uh, never won any awards at any film festivals, it has received more than 400,000 views on YouTube and Facebook with massive engagement in the, in the comments section. And people uh, somehow were just pouring, themsel pouring themselves out in the comments, like, to, uh, like sharing their, their struggles with depression, their thoughts of suicide and how people couldn't understand and their own family wouldn't listen to them or would dismiss them. And there was a few who even expressed how they just really gave up the will to live. And on one occasion, I, I reached out to, I think, one LGBT girl who was like, who felt she didn't exist anymore to her family. And so I was able to chat with her for like 20 minutes and you know, she was able to, I guess, let out all her issues. There was one striking uh, incident where a young African-American man, he had 
uh, live streamed our short film, uh, like a uh, like a Twitch feed, and he was reacting to it. And after watching the film, he was just expressing his like desire to to take his own life by suicide. And so. Uh, thankfully he had tagged us on Instagram while he was doing the feed. And so myself and the rest of the film and crew, we were able to like contact this young man and try to intervene and just talk to him and just be an open ear to him. And so we found that this short film was, was more than just a film. You know, it really uh, allowed us to reach out to people. It really opened up for other people to discuss about these perhaps taboo topics, taboo taboo issues, especially here in, this, in the Philippines where the culture is more conservative and religious. And so it really brought up opportunities to, to talk about more about depression and suicide and even opportunities for intervention. Uh, lastly, and more recently, uh, we, uh, my recent short film, I Am a Black Hole, uh, it depicted a generalized anxiety disorder, especially during the pandemic lockdown. And this short film was shot entirely on an iPhone 8 Plus with no budget, no cast, uh, no crew, and a single location because it was shot during the midst of, of uh, never ending lockdowns here in, in Manila. And uh, thankfully, I, I had used a the professional filmmaking app, Filmic Pro, where I was able to set up a remote, remote recording and video monitoring with a secondary iPad, actually my three-year-old daughter's iPad. And so I was able to do truly a, a one-man production. Like I couldn't have made this film with any other camera, a DSLR, a mirrorless camera, because being on my own, being the actor, the sole actor, being the director and everything, having this mobile setup, this mobile workflow, and even this wireless workflow, uh, I was able to uh, literally make this film on my own, by myself, in isolation. And, uh, and so far it has received uh, various official selections and screenings at, at various international film festivals around the world. And so now I'm thankful that this kind of visual story is being seen to a truly global audience with uh, different cultures, different audiences. And we're able to share these kind of stories. And it was all done pretty much on a smartphone right, with inexpensive gear and, and limited resources. And so we are, I really believe that we are now at an age where the tools of storytelling are, are even more accessible and, and can amplify our stories and messages to the wildest, widest possible global audience. Today's modern, modern smartphones are equipped with advanced cameras capable of recording ultra high definition video that are becoming more and more comparable to professional filmmaking cameras. I mean, you just have to look at the recent launch of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And you have famous Hollywood directors like Steven Soderbergh and Zack Snyder who have opted to shoot entirely on smartphones for some of their feature length or short film productions. The iPhone that was used to shoot the landmark feature length film Tangerine in 2015 is now permanently featured in the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. And so smartphone and mobile filmmaking, it's here to stay. And so as of 2021, there are 6.37 billion smartphone users in the world. What this essentially means is that nearly 80% of the world's population, let me say that again, 80% of the world's population is actually carrying a high quality, powerful filmmaking tool right in their pocket. Like there is no longer a barrier such as the need for professional gear or industry connections just to tell your story or message. Anyone, anywhere, at any time can potentially share their story, invite understanding and empathy, enlighten minds, inspire action, and transform society. And so I truly believe that effective mental health awareness can be achieved by instilling a sense of empathy and understanding in people. 
And there is no better way to instill empathy than to experience the issues of mental health through visual storytelling, either be it short films, documentaries, comics and graphic novels, or even TikTok videos. And so with the advent of mobile filmmaking, it is even easier and more accessible to tell these kinds of stories. And so I just wanna end this presentation with this quote from one of my favorite philosophers, contemporary philosopher, Paul Ricoeur, who said, we tell stories because in the last analysis, human lives need and merit being narrated. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to tell our stories. Uh, it is almost our human nature that we need to tell, tell our stories and express ourselves. And through mobile smartphone filmmaking, all the more we can do this. Mm -hmm.